Larry Berkelhammer. With me today is Dr. Eric Pepper, one of the foremost researchers in psychophysiological self-regulation. Thanks for coming. Well, thank you for inviting me. I would like to continue our discussion on exploring the frontier of psychophysiological self-regulation. You had told me years ago, uh, and I'd like to hear more about this, about how you experimented with yourself with neurofeedback, with EEG biofeedback, to such an extent that you could actually communicate consciously between your left and right hemispheres. Well, I wouldn't put it in that language. I think, you know, that was done in the late 60s and early 70s, so that you can tell. That's many years ago where we did a massive number of studies on EEG alpha training of both the occipital area and other areas on the head. Uh, this was done in the lab of Thomas Mulholland at the VA mm. in Bedford, Massachusetts. Mm. And I do have a kind of experimental rule. And that says that as an experimenter, you should always, if possible, be a subject yourself. Even though you may not include in the data. That's a different mm -hmm. piece. Because you want to experience what it is like. And I started that way because when we were, hooking, when we were recording many subjects, at that time the person was in a soundproof, lightproof room. He had these old polygraphs, many pen writers. This would show the EEG going along. Then we did studies you know, in, in this specific world. And then I would get different patterns. In order for me to understand it, when I looked at those patterns, I would often go back in the room and try to figure out what was the person doing so I would get the same pattern. Mm -hmm. So that is the background to that. And in that kind of training, you get a better, at least I got some insight, hopefully, what was going on. As if I want to try to be in your shoes, in your psychophysiological shoes, in, what is your experience? Mm -hmm. And could I, could I experience my brain or body the same way? I mean, that's sort of, I think, what I now do sometimes if I'm very good working with people. Can I almost be in your skin and see the world out of your perspective or feel it? So then I can... I mean, that would be, in psychotherapy, that would be considered empathy. Or just right, empathy. in that quality. Yeah. And so in that same way, one of the studies we did is we put electrodes over the more the sensory areas sensory motor areas, and then I learned to basically shut off alpha on one side or sensory motor rhythm-like pattern on one side and turn it on on the other back and forth on command. And that on is command, do you could turn off alpha in one hemisphere yes, but and turn on alpha in your other hemisphere. Yes, and remember that that concept isn't so strange because earlier even at the one had shown he could send Morse code with his alpha EEG and Joe Camille at the same time at university, a little bit earlier than that, although independent. At UCSF. No, he was initially University of Chicago, huh. independently, these were totally independent discoveries, in a sense, had done earlier, and he, Joe Camilla, really is the father, I would say, of EEG biofeedback, mm -hmm. in that sense. Is he, he started in the late 50s? Uh, late 60s, 50s, I think, when he did sleep research. Yeah. Uh, and he did the one where he had people in the, in the sleep lab seeing alpha, and he rang a bell, and he showed people could identify right. their own brain wave, wave rhythm. So that's the background. But these tend to be independent groups who did not yet talk to each other. And so when I initially started, I had never heard of Joe Camille or any of those people in Tom Holland's lab, because we were doing a different kind of biofeedback perspective in the you know, late 1960s and early 1970s. But yes, you can develop control. And this whole field has massively expanded into the area called now neurofeedback, yeah. where you can now look much more with much more detail at multiple areas of the head and, and ask what are the brain rhythms. And it, the data looks like people can have control over those rhythms. It's not always easy because it's very ephemeral. And so for my own world, I've tended to spend more time on somatic feedback, whether it's mm -hmm. breathing, muscle, or heart rate, right. because the skill acquisition is so much quicker. It's easier to identify. Well, I was just gonna ask you, I mean, you're clearly one of the people who has pushed the frontier of what's possible in psychophysiological self-regulation. What I wanna know is, how, how long did it take you to do that work where you could turn your hemispheres on and off? I'm trying to think, you know, I used to play for hours in the room, so I don't have a good data mm -hmm. pool. <laughs> but I think I did that. Where most fairly. people were watching TV, you, you were playing with your hemispheres. <laughs> well, we did some strange studies, you know, we yeah. once ran a, a person, Grant Kiever, for 
for two weeks straight, 24 hours a day doing alpha training. So, you know, I had the opportunity to really explore. And I think that's maybe the gift of science. And I really think the gift that Thomas Mulholland gave to me was an openness for exploration. Yeah. Yeah. And true science, I think yeah. science in a sense is to say, it's just interesting, let me explore. Right. And that, is, that allowed us to explore people right. like Jack Swartz sure. yeah. for the same reason, or others, Raymond Torres when I was at NYU, all these people, mm -hmm. they were different. And my question always has been, not what everybody else says they can do, but what is the outlier? It mm -hmm. is just like going all the way back to cancer. There's an average statistic, whatever illness you have, most people will either die or recover in an average rate. Mm -hmm. I'm intrigued, what makes the person who is this remarkable person who recovers more quickly? Right. What are they doing? Or what is happening? How can I extract information from that to help the person mobilize their health? Mm. Eric Pepper, thank you so much for joining us. It's my pleasure.